Now, it will form part of the largest scientific instrument ever built. The Meerkat radio telescope will be officially launched later today at the remote South African town of Carnarvon. 50 to 100 times more sensitive than any other radio telescope on Earth, its goal is to answer fundamental questions about the origins of the universe. Well, to discuss all of that, I'm joined by Dr. Francisco Diego, Senior Research Fellow at University College London's Astrophysics Group. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Francisco. Um, we, we, we've seen this sort of, uh, the, the, how complicated this telescope looks, sort of 64 satellites, I think, uh, all, all dotted around the place. Can you explain to the layman how this radio telescope is going to work? Uh, yes, a radio telescope is a bit different from a conventional telescope where you, we can put your eye and you can look at images directly in the, in the optical part of the, of the uh, electromagnetic radiation that we get from space. But a radio telescope works in different kind of wavelength, different kind of frequency, and we cannot see that. We detect that as, as a radio wave. See, it works like microwaves. It works like uh, this transmission that we have right now of uh, television and microwaves and uh, mobile phones, etc. So in this case, uh, what we need is a very large area of the telescope. And this technique has been used in two ways. One is to a, build a very big dish of a, a kind of satellite dish, if you like, which has a surface uh, of, uh, I mean, a diameter of several hundred meters, which is, uh, are the largest that have been built in the, in the world, the Adairisivo telescope. In, uh, in Puerto Rico and also the, the Rattan, the, um, the FAST telescope in, in China. Now, the Meerkat is going to have 64 antennas, so 13.5 meters each. When you combine all the surface area of these antennas, it's equivalent to our, for a telescope more than 100 meters across. Now, the point of this and the A in the cat, Meerkat, the A is an array. It's an array of 64 antennas which are going to be moving around the field to increase the separation between them, simulating the surface area of a telescope that will be several kilometers in diameter. This has been done in many places in the world, and this will be the largest one in the southern hemisphere. And this is the first stage of an even larger radio telescope that will be the, the, the largest uh, scientific uh, uh, experiment ever made, which is the uh, square kilometer array, and the SKA. <laughs> Francisco, you, yeah. you touched on it there. You said it's going to be the largest uh, telescope ever made. It's also going to be the most sensitive. What does that mean we're going to be able to see? Are we going to find extraterrestrial life? Well, uh, no, not exactly. Um, and that is a separate issue. I mean, the, the, main, the main, let me just try to see if, if we can uh, uh, split this into two. Uh, the main part of this telescope is to explore the universe in the neutral hydrogen radiation, which is a, a frequency that uh, is very permeate, it permeates the whole universe, our galaxy, all the galaxies, and it comes back to the origin of the universe. And the sensitivity of this telescope will be able to give us more idea of what happened at that time and that depth in space and that, and, and that uh, uh, far back in, in, in time. Now, the detection of extraterrestrial life is uh, part of what is called the SETI experiment, the, uh, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, where you can detect radio signals that possibly have been sent by a similar machine elsewhere in, in our galaxy. This is something that started in the 1960s when the radio telescopes were very big, for example, the Arecibo telescope, and they started listening to this uh, possible um, radiation uh, messages sent from, from the extraterrestrial civilization. It is, um, uh, in a way, it's an interesting experiment, uh, but it is almost a waste of time. We know that the probabilities of detecting something else <laughs> are very close to close to zero, I'm afraid to say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we may not find aliens, but we might find uh, dark matter and we may well find the origins of our universe.